Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go learn prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so honored and thankful, Lord, that we can. Thank you, Lord, for saving us, delivering us, redeeming us, and giving us Jesus, our eternal life. We give you all the praise and glory. And Lord, we pray for our nation. We speak peace to our country. We create and declare our nation is a righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus, the Jesus Lord of our country. And Father God, we pray for all the nation world, that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness then that you come. Thank you, Lord, for each and every day more people receiving Jesus by hearing the gospel and accepting Jesus as Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for all those missionaries out there, each and every one of them, Lord, are preaching your word in season now. And Lord, we pray for all the body of Christ, each and every believer, become baptized in the Holy Spirit, be taught about who they are in Christ, and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning in Jesus' name. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today, that I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me utter soul of ghost. And I pray, Father, Lord, as we hear your word and hear the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers your word and love the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's have our Bibles here, the book of Isaiah, please. And we'll start in Isaiah chapter 53 and read some divine healing scriptures. Now, the scripture says here in Isaiah 53, now verse 4 and, and verse uh, 5, Surely have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, that chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now let's go over here to the book of Matthew, please, and read here in Matthew chapter 8. The Holy Spirit through Matthew is going to put this here and record what took place in Isaiah. We'll start in verse 16. When he was come, they brought unto him many was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all their sick, that it might, fill, that it might be fulfilled which spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now let's go over to 1 Peter, please. Like you're heading towards the book of Revelation. To your right, a bunch of pages. Come to 1 Peter chapter 2. Now the Holy Spirit through Peter, by this time Jesus has already been crucified, died, and been raised to the dead. So our, our redemption has already been bought and paid for and given to us. Now, verse 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins, his own body of the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unrighteous, uh, unto righteous, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, notice here that says here, by whose stripes ye were healed. This is something Jesus already did not. He bought and paid for this and freely gave it to us. Just like we can believe that Jesus took our sins because the scripture says so, we can also believe that Jesus took our sick and disease because the scripture says so. And by focusing on that, it's going to help you and I live and walk in divine health and resist anything but try to come to steal, kill, and destroy for us when it comes to health or mental soundness or anything else as far as that goes. We've been given authority in Jesus' name, and what we want to do is we need to exercise that authority by speaking God's word and use the name of Jesus and keep ourselves fresh every day, you know, with God's word. Remind yourselves, like, you know, uh, renewing our mind to God's word. Like you get a computer, you got to program it. Well, we program our mind as believers with God's promises, His Word, what belongs to us. Now, while we're here, let's go over here to 3 John. You're just going to your right. And 3 John, now verse 2 says here, Beloved, that that's you and I as a believer. God made us His beloved through Jesus Christ. And the scripture said, because we're in Christ Jesus. So God sees us in Christ. Now, it says here, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Now, God wants us to prosper financially, have good health physically, and have a sound mind. You remember there in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And not only that, but in 1 Corinthians 2, 16, it says, We have the mind of Christ. And Philippians says, chapter 2, Let this mind be in you. Verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So God's concerned about our mind, our emotions, our intellect. He wants them to be sound and healthy and whole. And, of course, we do too. Now, we can just resist anything that would come to us that's contrary to that, any negative thinking. We always want to speak the word about our mind, about our brain, that we have the mind of Christ in Jesus' name, and cast down imaginations that come to torment us with fear, with worry, with doubt, with unbelief. We're going to do that by speaking the word in regards to the situation and praising God and thanking God that we are what his word says we are. Just constantly speaking the word and praising God and renewing our mind to God's word. Every day it's important for us to read promises from God's word that helps build us up. It feeds our faith on God's word. Remember Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word proceed out of the mouth of God. Well, just like you eat food, and that's supposed to give us nutritional value and strength. And then if you exercise, then that's supposed to help out too. But nevertheless, the person's got to eat or they won't breathe. Well, 
What we need from God is his word, and he gave us his word, so he wants us to feed up on it, meditate on it, hear it taught. Remember Romans 10, 17? So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And as we hear God's word, that produces faith. And faith can be acted on, and should be, one way, by just accepting what God said about us. Like, again, if it comes to healing, hearing and learning that by straps are healed, and then accepting that as God's will for our life. Now, many times Christians don't do that at first. They're thinking, well, now that can't be true. I mean, if God wants everybody healed, then everybody be healed. Well, does he want everybody saved? Of course he does. Well, each one of us have a will. And we can choose when we hear God's word to accept it and to receive it. Or we can choose to think about it and wonder if that's really true or not. Or even go as far as reject it. It's our choice. Remember, God told us in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I've set before you life and death, blessing, curse, therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. How do we choose life? Same way we chose Jesus. We chose Jesus and we received life by confessing him as our Lord and believing our heart has been raised in the dead. That's how we choose life. And we need to have speak words of life. Remember, Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life in John 6, 63. That's why his words are different than anybody else's words, because his words have life in it. And the Holy Spirit will convert, confirm the word in our life. He'll bring it to reality in our life. As we speak God's word and decree and declare what the word says about us, then what we're doing is we're exercising authority. And by renewing our mind every day, we'll begin to think in line with God's word. So when something comes up, first thing we think, wait a minute, that's not God's will, because that's contrary to the word. God doesn't want to have any pain or sickness. If he did, he wouldn't have put our sickness, diseases, and pains upon Jesus. So that right away, we can begin to eliminate that thought. Maybe God wants us trying to teach me something. No, he sent the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. He doesn't beat a person up and then try to teach them something. What we need to know is that God wants us to reject anything that has to do with fear, doubt, and unbelief, anything that's contrary to our new covenant we have in Christ Jesus. And God has given us all his blessings that he has when he gave us Jesus. And when we receive Jesus, we receive all the Father has. It's all wrapped up in Jesus and our salvation, plan that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. And as we begin to hear God's word and learn about what belongs to us in our new covenant, then we can take advantage of those benefits and blessings. Remember the psalmist said, forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee love and kindness and for mercy, who satisfy thy mouth with, thy, with good things so thy youth is renewed like the eagles. That's important. Every day we can decree God's word and decree and declare that we're stronger today. Every day we get stronger emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, knowing about who we are in Christ and seeing ourselves accordingly to him. And when, when we take these promises and begin to read them to ourselves and quote them ourselves, that begins to paint an inner, inner image inside of ourselves, that we see ourselves accordingly to that, that we do have the mind of Christ, that God does want us, he wants us to prosper. If he didn't, he wouldn't have never made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. And Jesus wouldn't have ever take poverty on the curse, on the cross, excuse me, as a curse. Remember there in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says, For you know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, Yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. Now there's some Christians who bless their hearts that do everything they can to talk you out of prosperity, like there's something wrong with it. No, there's something wrong with it. God would have never told us that it belonged to us. He never would have said he wished above all things that we prosper. He wants us to prosper. There's nothing wrong with having blessings, material blessings. It doesn't cause a person to become evil. It's their heart. And when you receive Jesus, you have a new heart, a new spirit man. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And what we need to realize is that God wants us to enjoy this life. That's why he gave us abundant life. Not just eternal life. Not just everlasting life, but abundant life. Abundant. Our cup should run over in every area of our life. That we have more than enough joy and victory and peace. Because Jesus wants us to have it this way. And if God didn't want us to have a life that way, then he never would have given it to us. He wouldn't have redeemed us from the curse. He could just put our sins upon Jesus. But he did more than that. He put our sick and diseases upon Jesus. Or the, sick, the sin, the curse that was on mankind, he put that upon Jesus. And that's why Christ hath redeemed us the curse of the law. How did Christ redeem us from the curse of the law? Being made a curse for us. For his written curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree. That's why Jesus was crucified. He became the curse. The curse was put, placed upon him. A poverty, sickness, disease, spiritual death, when Jesus went to the cross. And he paid the price for us and redeemed us and delivered us. 
and we need to see ourselves that we are the redeemed, we are the delivered, and we just don't accept anything that has to do with stealing, killing, destroying to come upon our life. Stand boldly against it in Jesus' name. And that's one of the reasons why we're told in Ephesians chapter 6, having done all stand, stand therefore. How in the world would a person do that? Holding fast their profession of faith by decreeing and declaring who we are in Christ Jesus. And decreeing and declaring we have what God's word says we have. And making ourselves every day become more familiar with promises. As we're taught God's word, how to apply God's word, then we need to begin to apply it to our life. We do that by accepting them. By refusing those thoughts that come to us that try to make us feel guilty or shameful or have condemnation because we have material blessings and someone else doesn't have anything. No, we, we reject those. We're not going to help anybody by giving up everything we have. But we can give and be a blessing to people, of course. But we want to make sure that people receive Jesus. In other words, we witness to them, giving them the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they can receive Jesus and begin to enjoy the benefits that belong to them that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to them. And they're going to be able to do that by gaining the knowledge of God's word, being taught about, this is what Jesus did for me. And every day we're learning more in the body of Christ about what Jesus did for us. And we should be. And then take advantage of it. Jesus said, learn of me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. We're not to be burdened down in this life. That if a person's burdened down, they're not following Jesus. No, we, he, he, everything we do, we're to do it with joy and victory. Now, there'll be challenges, of course. Those are just for the enemy. But they all have to be resisted. And just th reject the shame, reject the guilt, reject the condemnation that would come to a person. And some people, you know, they work so hard that they feel guilt if they slept in. No, you know, your body needs rest. And what we have to do is just realize that the enemy is going to try to do anything he can to discourage us, to bring us into bondage. You know, like the scripture said, you suffer when a man puts you in bondage. You sure do. And religion bondage is probably like the worst. Guilt, condemnation, trying to make a person feel bad because whatever they're believing God for. You know, when I first heard Mark eleven twenty four, 24, I was thrilled to hear it. Scripture said, therefore I say to you what things are bizarre when you pray, believe you see them and you should have them. Now, I, I'm just thinking everybody's going to be thrilled to hear this. I'm just now found out about it. Maybe everybody else already knows about it. So I begin to share it with other people, Christians. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, and I, I only, that's the only verse I know about your desires of your heart and, and that God would hear you and answer your prayer was Mark 11, 24. Well, oh boy, I got, all, I got bombarded by people telling me, trying to tell me that doesn't mean what you think it means. Some, some are ministers. And definitely they're, the ones we're talking to are born-again Christians. Amen. Spirit filled. And it was, it was, you know, difficult to get some takers on him. And I said, you know, I thought, well, I thought everybody just want to hear this. And then third John verse two, I thought people would be almost do handsprings when they hear, hear that. You get what I mean? You get real excited. Oh boy. I tell you, I'm right across all kinds of opposition against that scripture. Well, that's not true. That, that doesn't mean what you think it means. It's always, that doesn't mean what you think it means. Of course it means what they think it means, right? Yeah. And that, you know, to put a disclaimer on it, well, that's just for the Jewish people. You know, that passed away, or if that was the case, how come so-and-so don't have nothing? Well, how come someone isn't saved? Is that God's fault? Does that mean salvation is not for everyone? There's probably only about six or seven billion people on the planet that aren't saved. Does that mean salvation is not for, for everyone? Does that mean John 3.16 is not for everyone? Maybe we need a new explanation about what John 3.16 really means. Maybe God's really not that concerned if you do receive Jesus. Maybe it's okay. You know, you can die without him. You'll be okay. No. I mean, when, when doubt and unbelief comes in, if you don't take authority over it, it, it get out of control. And so what we do is resist all those thoughts and boldly stand on God's covenant he gave us through Jesus Christ. And knowing that God wants us to prosper financially and be in hell. He wants us to have good health, sound mind. In the name of Jesus, we have the mind of Christ. And you want to always speak to your mind and call your mind strong and healthy. My short-term memory is excellent. My long-term memory is excellent. In the name of Jesus, my communication skills is excellent. Jesus saying, for I have the mind of Christ. Christ has redeemed the curse of the law. And anything come to, to counter that, you want to resist it. Jesus saying, say, no, I refuse that. Or it's written, I have the mind in Christ. It's written, no evil shall befall me. This shall play come not my dwelling. We've been redeemed. Deuteronomy lists feeble minds as a curse in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 16. But Galatians 3, 13, praise God for Jesus. Christ has redeemed us in the curse. So all those curses that's in the Old Testament that came upon people, Jesus redeemed us from. They, they were all placed upon Jesus when he was being crucified. The judgment, the sin, sin of the world, the wrath of God, 
All that was placed upon Jesus. And he'd redeemed us from it. And what happens is people try to mingle the old covenant in with the new covenant. And get people over to works. And get people to, you know, to feel bad if they have something about, you know, something good in their life. Well, no, God wants to enjoy our abundance life. He gave it to us through Jesus Christ. And his epistle letters is going to let us know that we're in Christ Jesus. We're an heir of Abraham's blessing. And we're a joiner of Christ Jesus. And like Jesus said, all the Father has is thine. In Luke chapter 15, verse 31. And just grab those promises. But, you know, I didn't know. All I knew was 3 John, verse 2. 1 Peter 2, 24. Scripture like that. You know, I get one about healing. One about prosperity. One about prayer, the prayer of faith. And just so zealous, just... To, and, and, and I, I'd change the conversation just to get somebody ask me a question so I could bring it up. And it got very few takers. In fact, it got scolded, rebuked, and lectured. and <laughs> oh, poor, People got upset. But by God's grace and mercy, he helped me stay with it. But they would bring up people that didn't receive, that didn't have anything, that loved the Lord, and followed the Lord, and was faithful. And they'd have a long list of things that they did was good and look at them they never did get healed they never did get anything in life and that just goes to show da, 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 da. that's the same thing when you talk to somebody that's religious and let them know they have to be born again to say well what about all the other good people what about all these other people what about this group and that group they'll bring up all kinds of other people what are they trying to say they're trying to say well that can't be that way it's just not jesus only it's got to be other ways too well you know the thing is god only had one son and he gave his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the only one that took the sins of the world. No one else did that. And Jesus said, I am the way. No man come to the, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Did he mean it? You know, why would he tell us to go out in all the world and preach the gospel of every creature? He that believes baptized should be saved. He that believes not should be damned. Why would he tell us to do that? Was he lying? Oh, certainly not. But see, that doesn't make sense to people that are trying to think about logically. What about all the people that never received Jesus? Well... That's, that's why we need to get the gospel to them. You don't want to die without Jesus because he's the only one who took our sins. Not good works. Good works doesn't wipe out sin. Good works don't delete sin. Self-righteousness doesn't delete sin. It's Jesus' righteousness that makes us right with God. And we just depend on him. That we're healed because the word says we are. We're not trying to earn healing. We're not trying to be real good Christians and maybe God will bless us. No, that's, that's back in the law. You know, the Old Testament is thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. If you do, I will do. But no, the new covenant is all about Jesus. What he did, what he already paid for, he already bought, he already freely gave it to us. It's free. If we, if we had to earn it, then it's not free. Free is free. And Jesus gave us eternal life by taking the sins of the world and by giving his life. And when we receive Jesus, everything else the Father has belongs to us. And he wants us to have good health. But we have to we always remind ourselves of that and resist, resist anything we try to come up our body or attack us in our thinking process, our mind, our intellect, and say, no, I refuse that in Jesus' name. I cast that thought down in Jesus' name. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. It doesn't belong to it. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is what we use to resist anything we try to come on us. And just boldly decree and declare, this is what God's word says about me. And I do have the mind of Christ. And not say things contrary to God's word about your mind or about your body or about your health. Just constantly sit, focus on what the word says. Now, you know, that takes some effort on our part. But we need to get ourselves fully convinced and fully persuaded this is what belongs to us. This is, this is what we have and who we are in Christ Jesus. That we are the redeemed. We are the delivered. We're not trying to get delivered. We're not trying to get uh, redeemed. Jesus already bought and paid for it. He freely gave it to us. And that's why God wants that, because it's God's will that every person have a blessed life, live in abundance. And he's got more than enough that he's given to us. You know, Jesus' blood is much more powerful than all the sins of the world that's ever been committed, ever will be committed, or being committed right now. That's how powerful Jesus' blood is. It's Jesus paid the price once and for all. Hebrews says like over five times that Jesus did this once. He's not have to do it again. He's already taken the curse that was on mankind, the sins were on mankind, the judgment of sin. Jesus took all that when he went to the cross. God placed that upon Jesus. And Jesus redeemed us. And by his stripes were healed. So he was beaten before he went to the cross. And as we have, like when you have communion, that bread is Jesus' body. That cup is his blood. In the Old Testament, Exodus, as you part, as those people partook of that lamb, there was not one people person among them. 
How about that? Not one feeble, not one crippled person, not one dim eye. No, everybody was healthy and whole. And when they put the blood on their doorpost, the death angel could not penetrate it. It couldn't get through the curse. And think about this. That's how powerful that, 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 that covenant was that they had if they just implemented it. They know those people were perfect. And know those people were sinless. No, it was what God did for them. And as Jesus did this for us, he's our lamb offered up. Like John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus, behold, the lamb of God would take away the sins of the world. And Jesus came to do that. And Jesus is our lamb. He's our sacrifice. He did this for us. When the, in the Old Testament, when you brought the animal to the priest, they didn't examine the person. They examined the lamb to see if it had any flaws in it. Well, Jesus is our sacrifice. So not, God's not examining us. He's looking at the sacrifice of Jesus, and he sees us in Christ Jesus. He sees us complete. We're not trying to get complete. See, people put that on you. Well, if you get rid of this, get rid of that, then God will bless you. That's a lie. That's such a lie. We're already blessed. We're not trying to get blessed. You couldn't possibly give up enough stuff and then God will bless you. Our covenant's not based on us giving up. That's, our covenant's never based on us anyway. It's not even with us. It's with God and with Jesus. And neither of them are going to fail. No, it's been freely given to us. And you'd hear people say, you know, they'd sing songs and services, you know, especially Pentecostal services, charismatic service, get right with God, church. The Holy Spirit would like to move, but the, he's, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. There's sin in the camp. Well, now wait a minute here. Where'd all this stuff come from? There was not one perfect person that came out of Egypt. And now all they had to do is put the blood on their doorpost. Had nothing to do with their conduct. And everyone was spared. The plague could not touch them. Now Jesus came for our lamb. He was offered up for us. It's God sees him. And he sees us in Christ Jesus. He sees us complete. And he wants us to see ourselves that way. I mean, if the Holy Spirit could, re could reprove a sinner to receive Jesus Christ as Lord, the Holy Spirit doesn't tell him, get rid of your sin, and then God will save you. That's guilt. That's condemnation. No, you want the sinner to come just as they are to receive Jesus Christ. So their sin did not keep them receiving Jesus. And your sin and, and perfection will not keep a person receiving healing because it's already been given. We're not trying to get healed. It's already been given to us. And we need to see that we're healed because the Word says we are. We're redeemed because the Word says we are. We're righteous because the Word says we are. Not because we live this life that we go without doing things. No. We're already made the righteous of God in Christ. And when a Christian sins, they don't become unrighteous. There's this thing in the new covenant is righteous, unrighteous, righteous, unrighteous, righteous, unrighteous. No. Once a person receives Jesus, they've received the righteousness of God in Christ. And what we need to do is to depend, totally depend on Jesus. That he's our righteousness. He's what made us right with God. God sees us in Christ. Yes, Jesus is so are we in this world. We are complete, not trying to become complete. And people go around peddling that doubt and unbelief and put shame on people, trying to make them feel bad because they haven't prayed enough or didn't read their Bible enough or don't go to church enough. Well, pr praise God for praying. Praise God for reading their Bible. Thank God for going to church. But that doesn't make us right with God. Only Jesus did. Our gospel, we have it. It's Jesus only. It's not Jesus and get right with God. It's not Jesus and, and make sure you do this and don't do that and promise God you'll never do it again. We're not taught to promise God to do anything. When the Apostle Paul wrote those letters he, by the Holy Spirit, he never said, church, get right with God and God will bless you. Even when they committed fornication, he said, what? Know you not that your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost? What did he do? He reminded them about who they were in Christ. And we just don't know, always know that Jesus did this for us. And that he, made, he paid the price and God wants us to have everlasting life. Every person to have it. So no one can clean themselves up and become right with God. No, it's received Jesus and his blood made us right with God. It's never anything else we do. You hear people say, well, you know, God's come back to the Lord's church without spot or wrinkle, get all the wrinkles and all the spots out. How are you going to get that done? If his blood did not do it, you're never going to be able to do it in your conduct. That proved the law proved no one was going to be right with God. No one's going to become a new creature without the law. Because no one could keep it. Only Jesus did. Only Jesus had perfect performance. Only Jesus had perfect faith. Only Jesus had perfect obedience to God. No one else has ever had that. And ever will in this life. But in Christ Jesus, God sees us complete. So God's not waiting for a person to give something up and then he's going to heal them. 
He's not waiting for them to promise him that they won't do it again, and then he'll bless them. No, we have a new covenant. We are blessed. We are healed. We are redeemed. We are delivered. We are righteous. We are sanctified. We are holy. We are justified. We are complete. We're flawless and flawless. That's how God sees us. And we take promises from God's word to see ourselves that way. And by decreeing and declaring, this is what God's word says. We don't want to think about ourselves. It must be something I've done wrong, and that's why I don't have my blessing. No. We want to think about Jesus. Or I bought my blessing, freely gave it to me. There's nothing wrong in my life that's keep me from receiving it. I receive it by faith in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. According to your word, I'm healed. According to your word, I'm delivered. According to your word, in the name of Jesus, I'm blessed. And just decree and boldly declare your covenant that you have with, with God, that made you right with God, that we are God's accepted, we're God's beloved. And so often people are thinking, well, there must be something wrong in our life. You start looking at that stuff, man, it's, you're going to find all kinds of things. Of course, the enemy is going to help accommodate you. No, you don't, we don't look at ourselves. We look at Jesus and Jesus only. Our, our gospel we have is Jesus and Jesus, Jesus only. The simplistic of the gospel is Jesus only. It's never Jesus and do these three things. It's never Jesus and just try real hard to be a good Christian. What in the world is a good Christian? Every person would have a different op opinion of that. Or be a good steward. What in the world is being a good steward? Everyone would have an opinion about being a good steward. Everyone would have think, think well, that costs too much. See, they put a cap on it somewhere. You're talking about God that streets with paved with gold. You think he cares how much you paid for your ring or whatever? You see, it's God that wants us to have wealth and riches in our house. He wants us to enjoy this as it is in heaven, so be in this earth. And we have a new covenant. It's not based on us having to give up everything to follow Jesus. We're already redeemed. We're already delivered. We're in Christ Jesus. And it's just good to always remind ourselves of that. And refuse all the doubt and unbelief and condemnation, guilt, and shame on you for this, and shame on you for that. No, Jesus bore our shames. He, he took our condemnation. Condemnation is a killer. It's a destroyer. It causes a person in their own mind to disqualify themselves and receive it from God. Thinking, well, you know, look at all these terrible things I did. You're looking at you. Look at Jesus. Everyone has done terrible things in their mind or with their action. And they need to realize that they totally have to depend on what Jesus did and look at him, that we see ourselves, that we are the righteous of God in Christ. We're complete. Righteous means we're right standing with God 24-7. And when we sin, we do not become unrighteous. We did nothing to become righteous. We can do nothing to become unrighteous. And what's going to help a person get out of something and keep tripping over is just keep decreeing and declaring, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. That's what's going to give them strength. That's why the Apostle Paul would say over and over again, what? No, you not. What? No, you not. What? Reminding them about who they are in Christ Jesus. And thank God that we can do that on a daily basis as believers and just remind ourselves, thank you, Lord Jesus. I praise you and I thank you I'm healed because your word says I am. Amen. Father God, I pray for each of your viewer. I thank you, Lord, that they're healed, delivered, and redeemed. I stand with them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, that they're the righteous of God in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not sure. Or maybe you know you've never done it. Today is the day to receive Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. There's nothing greater, no greater gift than receiving Jesus. And when you receive him, then you're, you become God's child. And that's what God wants. He wants everyone to receive his son, Jesus. Here in Romans chapter 10, the scripture tells us how to do this. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, I'm going to read these three scriptures. If you're not sure, or you know you haven't received Jesus, let's do this today. And after I read these scriptures, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. Now, the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believeth righteous, with the mouth of faith man salvation. Now verse 13 says, For whosoever calls on me, Lord, shall be saved. Pray these words with me. Mean it from your heart. Mean what you say. Say it out loud. At least not enough you can hear yourself say it. And you'll receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Say this after me. God, I come to you. To say these words, God, I come to you. To receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart, and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God, you raised him dead. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for protecting me. I'll never go to hell. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You prayed that prayer, good for you. I'd like for you to start reading the New Testament. Start with the Gospel of John. And find a church to go to, and your area teaches Jesus the only way to heaven. 
That church and that pastor will help you grow and develop spiritually. And later on, if God leads you to go to another church, that's between you and him. But start reading the New Testament. Get a Bible. Go buy a Bible if you don't have one. Thank God for Bibles on our apps on our phone. I ain't talking about that. That's good. I got those too. No, get a physical Bible and start reading the Gospel of John. If you got a prayer request, you can email me at Jess Rich Ministries, and I'll stand with you and believe God with you for everything scriptural. And you can also call in tonight on our, on our uh, church on the phone. That phone number and access code should be right on our Facebook page. Take advantage of that. And I want to encourage you to just keep helping the gospel go forth. You know, some areas churches aren't going yet. Help that pastor out and that church out. Your pastor may not tell you, but they need your help. Help them with your tithes, with your offerings, whatever you've done before, and prayer and everything else. Let's keep working together as children of God to build God's kingdom. Enjoyed being here today. I'm so thankful and honored that you've watched today. Next time, it's Brother Rich Bond. I love you. I'm praying for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough. <laughs>